whenever the mood strikes you. Hey guys, welcome to Talking Through the Media's, your home for entertainment news and reviews by fans for fans. Remember to like and subscribe, send us those questions and those comments because we want to hear them. I am Amy Newman and joining me today, I've got the beautiful Chris Fagan. Well, prepare yourself guys, this is Chris and I am ready to get this show on the way. I'm excited, so let's get right to it. Well, okay, guys, we're going to start the show off with why is that trending and why is that trending? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. We are going to go through the topics over the week that we want to discuss. And if you have a topic that you want to send to us, you can send it right here at mail at t3medias.com. We might pick your topic and discuss it right here on why is that trending. So, Amy, what, what is the first trending topic that we're going to go over today? Well, according to The Hollywood Reporter, they have released an article that said the following. Ball and Chain, the superhero package that will reteam Jungle Cruise stars Emily Blunt with Dwayne Johnson, has landed at Netflix. So this project's going to be based on the 90s comic of the same name by Scott Lobdell, which Oscar, Amini Woo. <laughs> Oscar nominee, she was not... Oscar nominated, Oscar nominated Emily V. Gordon is adapting that. Uh, in that, Johnson and Blunt are going to play a couple struggling with their marriage, who are equipped with superpowers, but their powers only work when they are together. So, Chris, what do you think about Ball and Chain being produced for Netflix? Are you excited about it? I think that that finally Netflix has earned their status as the quintessential top dog of the streaming platform. I, I finally, when you, when you bring the rock into the picture with some, with some content like this, a comic book movie about a superhero couple who cannot stand each other, but their powers and I guess their need to do good only work when they're forced together. It's my nightmare <laughs> scenario. And I love everything. Uh, about it, Emily Blunt and The Rock are are. Just, I think they just wrapped another movie that they did together. Obviously, it was a good experience for both of them because they're signed to another uh, project again. I don't know much about the Ball and Chain comic book, uh, but I read a lot of comic books in the '90s and whatnot. I was mostly with the main stuff, the Marvels, the DCs, the Image comic stuff. So the independent stuff, I did not familiarize myself with but when i read the concept of and i looked a little bit up at the uh, of the artwork i said this is this is going to be hilarious probably something that the movie i don't know if you remember remember hancock with will smith probably mm -hmm. what it's going to probably be in the same vein of that and so that's just what i imagine so i'm, I'm excited about it. i'm looking forward to it what about you what do you think about this whole ball and chain concept yeah, super great concept. I will always say it. Not always going to go superhero for superhero's sake, but if it's if it's a clever concept, and this certainly is, definitely interested. Sounds like they've got a pretty star team pulling that together. I'll be curious to see how much it is, you know, actual superhero action, or if it's a little more parody of superhero. I think Netflix has proven they can do the real superhero shows and handle that and have the budget for that with, you know, stuff like Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and some of those shows. But I think it's a super, super clever concept. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it. Could, could you imagine your, uh, your ex and, and your own, and you're, you're blessed with these superpowers and the only way you can contribute to society, save the world is if your ex is right there like, oh, we, we have to fly over there like that. I mean, could you imagine this scenario? What would you do in this situation? Uh, the humanity would be screwed, truly <laughs> enough. <laughs> And just be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I guess those that bus full of nuns just isn't going to survive this time. <laughs> oh, this looks like a job for somebody else because I just can't. <laughs> Well, oh well, guys. Well, that's uh, well, you know what? It also it reminds me a little bit of it's, it could be as gritty as Umbrella Academy. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but mm -hmm. uh, Umbrella, if you aren't if you aren't into the superhero thing as 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 much, something like Umbrella Academy might might be to your liking. So if you haven't checked that out, season two is about to drop in July. So if you have time, I recommend the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. So. It might it might change your mind about most of these superhero uh, movies. But the question is, guys, what do you guys think? What do you think about Emily Blunt and Dwayne The Rock Johnson 
being tied together with the ball and chain concept, a superhero uh, movie being brought to you by Netflix. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think about it, and we might answer your comments or questions on the next We Got Your Mail. So, Amy, what's trending next? Uh, it was reported on Deadline that Alamo Draft House Cinema, the dining theater, the super fancy theaters, uh, they had three locations in Arizona filed for Chapter 11 amid the impact from uh, the coronavirus pandemic. It was then reported on BuzzFeed, though, that Alamo Draft House has a new on demand streaming service. They're going to be offering new releases for rent starting at $3.99 or to buy starting at $9.99. Uh, John Mahaley of BuzzFeed said, think of it as your new video store. So what is going on, Chris? Alamo's filing for some bankruptcy and starting a streaming service. This, this was a story that we both like collided together. I, like, I said, what do you think about the whole Alamo Draft House thing filing for bankruptcy? And you wound up me like... like we wait, were... I, I literally was sending you an article about the streaming service. <laughs> exactly. You, you like wound up me like we were playing poker. I, I see your bankruptcy and I raise you a what the heck is going on with this streaming service? That that blew my mind. I Well, when you read the article, it says, like you said, that the, the bankruptcy is only happening to three locations in the same state. So it's not happening like they're at the Alamo Draft House here. In, in my areas here in Texas or anything like that or in, anywhere else that I imagine. So, we have an Alamo. So you, you, they, there, there is an Alamo Draft House where you're at? We just recently got one in downtown LA, yeah. Mm. I haven't been yet, but. So they were, so, sorry, so they're expanding. And then at the same mm -hmm. time, once the, the uh, pandemic hit, you know, obviously it, it, it hurt some franchises uh, harder than others maybe. And, um, and at the same time, they were thinking, wow, we're probably like December, November. They were like, we're going to launch this new streaming service. This is going to be great. Nothing can stop us now. <laughs> and then, bam. So you just got an, an Alamo Draft House over there in your location. So have, you, have you been to one yet? I haven't. I've heard they're super nice. Uh, definitely, we would want to go when this all clears up. But as we've talked before about movie theaters, that's a lot of what I'm, I'm hearing uh, – studios and, and movie theater chains worrying about of everything moving to streaming service and on demand and things you can watch from home. So, you know, I hope, I hope they are able to maintain the ones they have because it does seem like a great option if you want a really full movie going experience. But I also think this feels kind of an interesting niche. Uh, the streaming service looks really interesting. They're talking about it being like, you can do like bundle packages. Right with sort of like a thematic through line and talking about it, not just like a video store, but like the employee picks of the video store. So I think that'll be really fun for movie buffs who are going, well, I liked this. What else should I watch? I, I think that's going to fill a real niche. Oh man. If, if only, I wonder if they'll do it the way they used to. I used to work at a blockbuster and uh, on Hollywood video for a little while. And uh, I, we used to have that, that uh, the, employee picks the crisp picks so i was mm -hmm. constantly forcing kevin smith movies you're gonna love clerks and mall rats and chase and amy just constantly forcing uh that whole view askew uh verse uh by kevin smith on people who were just not into it so i wonder if it's gonna be something like that like there'll be like a suggestion box or a little, a little link to go to where a dude named john here at alamo is um is a suggesting move something like that maybe like a little reviews you can read by the people who work there or maybe from other other people something like that may maybe maybe not but um if you if you haven't been to an alamo draft house and if you are planning on going i'll tell you this you'll you'll think that the whole concept of the waiters like walking kind of in front of you or walking past you to serve you food uh, in the middle of the movie or just before the movie starts is going is going to distract you you will be surprised mm -hmm. how much it, it doesn't. At, fir at first, you're kind of like, oh, is this going to bother me? But And, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it's different for, for you, but for the most part, people are not bothered by it. And I was surprised. I wasn't bothered by it because I have movie rules. I do not like to be interrupted in my movie watching. But I was not bothered by that, that kind of uh, slouched over waiter like, hey, can I get your order? Uh, okay, you want fries? And, and it, it, for some reason, it doesn't yeah. bother me. It makes you feel like you're in your living room because I guess when the food shows up, you're pretty, you're pretty happy about that. But uh, have you, as, have yeah, you ever honestly, been to I'll a... never be bad at the person bringing me food and drinks. I'm like, yeah. no, come here. I don't care if the movie, over here. I need a refill. It's, it's a good experience. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'm looking forward to it. But the question is, guys, what do you think about this whole thing about another 
streaming service coming to us with the whole thing with Alamo Draft House going for bankruptcy and just one of their locations. Does this mean that this was this was too soon for them to try to get into the streaming game? We I guess time will tell. But let us know what you guys think. Put it in the box below and uh, we'll probably talk about it on We Got Your Mail. So let's see what what is also trending. What's next on the, the list? We got an email from original film publicity department of Netflix in regard regards to uh, the movie The Lovebirds with uh, Issa Rae and Kumail Nanjiani directed by Michael Showalter. That movie was slated to go to theaters April 3rd by Paramount, but then the pandemic as is a very common thread sort of shut that down. So since theaters were closed, uh, the rights were then sold to Netflix and Netflix is planning on releasing that digitally May 22nd of this year. So. Chris, what uh, what for T3 Media's do we have uh, heading our way? Are we expecting an early screening and review on our blog and channel? Dude, dude, dude. I totally bugged the bleep out of Netflix trying to see if I can get an advanced screening of, of this. The uh, internet. I, you can curse here. They, oh, don't, I, they won't. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm trying not to. I mean, I mean, people usually... They'll, they'll curse, but I'm trying to... I'm trying to for myself just to censor myself. I mean, the world is... Was full of uh, so much fucking profanity. I'm like, I don't got time for that shit. But <laughs> it's just that when I heard that that this movie was coming to Netflix, I was I was bummed because of what was going on with the quarantine. Because I was trying to see, I was looking forward to seeing it in theaters, and when the opportunity to screen it uh, early came up, I was super excited about it. This was back in April, and finally we got the uh, the green light to screen it. And uh, I'm hope I'm looking forward to making that relationship between T3 Media's and the um, and the Media Center up at Netflix, so we could do some more screenings as well. Not just me, but uh, if if you're available as well. So I'm I'm also trying to get you involved uh, uh, with this. Would you be interested in in doing some screenings of of original Netflix content of series and movies? A few weeks, few months, whatever the situation is before the uh, the movies are about to come out, so we can do early reviews. Are you kidding? I love knowing things other people don't know. I love any sense, anything I can hold over people. Of oh yeah, I saw that. That was pretty good. So, like, what do you mean you saw that? It's not even out yet. Oh, I know a guy. I know a guy. Know His name. He doesn't curse. He's pretty cool. <laughs> but but that's, 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 I saw I saw a screener, Amy. You don't like her. She's she's awful. Have you done? Have you uh, gone to or do you do advanced screenings or, or go to any of the ones out, out there? I know there's a lot out there in LA. Yeah, I uh, I know some people. I have some ins. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the like unions. It's pretty easy to get into uh, screeners. I I recently they don't um, give me Alamo Draft House every time. If you try to yell for someone to bring you a drink at like the Directors Guild, oh you no, know, I don't. That, that they're not tolerating that there. That's that we're not we're not putting up with any of that nonsense. But I'm excited. I'm excited about it. So tonight, either tonight after we finish this, or tomorrow morning sometime, I'll I'll screen it. And uh, I'll give I'll put the review up. The embargo doesn't lift on that until the the twenty tomorrow. Well, uh, yeah, tomorrow at about I think I think it's at seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully I'll be done uh, reviewing it. I'll also put it on the blog, a uh, written review of it as well, and it'll be available uh, on the channel. So guys, look out for that. There will be a review. I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's good. I'm going to give my honest opinion. I'm never. Trust me, guys, I'm never the kind of guy just because I think that Netflix is doing me a solid that I'm going to always give a, a shining, glowing review of everything that they do. No, they <laughs> I will give my honest review. I'm looking forward to it, but uh, I, I will give my honest review on it. So look out for that on the a little bit after seven Eastern time sometime uh, on uh, on what's it? What's that Wednesday? Yeah. On the 20th. So look out for that, guys. And the Lovebirds comes out on Friday. Uh, on Netflix, and I believe it should be sometime after midnight or after two o'clock. I don't know when they decide to actually officially drop uh, uh, something, but it will be Friday when it's officially coming out. 
we recently did an interview of one of the actors on uh, for that movie, and that's and that was the I think that was the end. I said, hey, I did exactly what you like that impersonation that you did. I kind of I did a little name drop. I was like, come on, guys, can you give me an advance copy? I mean, I did just interview one of the actors, and it and it did not work <laughs> the first time. And then I mentioned it again, and they were like, I think because I bugged them so many times, they're like, fine, watch the movie. Let us know what you guys think. Put it, uh, put it out there, and um, and be happy and be. And so look out for that, guys. I, I hope I, I'm looking forward to. It. I'm hoping to uh, get a kick out of it because I, I like those guys. I like I like everybody that's cast in there. All right. So let us know what you guys think about that. Put in the box below, and then we might talk about your thoughts on the next. We got your mail. So is that the it was that uh, the end of what, what's trending, or do we have one more topic? We got, we got breaking news. That's the breaking news bulletin. Uh, last minute shocker. Don't Google that. Uh, <laughs> don't Google last minute shocker. Oh my God. It, 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 it takes me like a, a second and a half to get it. Jokes that I feel we like. I should... a joke grenade. Mm, mm, when you throw mm, it, mm, it's mm. just. Uh, breaking news. Ruby Rose, the. Former star of the CW's freshman drama series, Batwoman, is leaving the production, that Warner Brothers TV Berlanti Productions drama, after only one season on the show. Uh, the series, which has been renewed for its second season, is going to continue. They said they are going to recast that title role. Uh, here's what Ruby Rose had to say. She said, I've made the very difficult decision to not return to Batwoman next season. This was not a decision I made lightly, as I have the utmost respect for the cast, crew, and everyone involved with the show in both Vancouver and in Los Angeles. So, Chris, I know you watch Batwoman. Are you surprised by the news she's leaving? Are you still excited for season two? What's up? I'm I am super, super surprised at this news. I it's Batwoman is not my favorite out of the lineup of the uh, CWDC uh, Arrowverse, whatever they call it, uh, lineup, Supergirl, uh, Flash, and uh, Black Lightning, all these shows. But uh, I did enjoy what they were doing with like their villains. Um, mm -hmm. Amy Rose is, is uh, honestly, is not the strongest uh, you know, actress uh, in the world. <laughs> and, uh, Amy, what did I say, Amy Rose? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where's my, my mind? stage name? <laughs> Ruby Rose is not the the strongest actor uh, actor uh, in the world, but I was okay with with her casting only because of the fact that um, what the the character represents, the LGBT uh, community. I thought it was it was uh, smart to uh, get an actress that uh, represented that community, and and a lot of people were excited about it for that reason. The other half were people who just were like thinking, oh my goodness, this is uh, exactly what we feared with the Wonder Woman casting. I mean, you're getting a model instead of uh, an actor or not necessarily a model is a bad thing, but just a model that doesn't have the acting experience to carry their own yeah. you know, movie or franchise. So a lot of people were worried about that same thing with Ruby Rose, but when Wonder Woman worked out pretty well, and I thought, I thought it came out uh, okay. pretty good. I thought the same thing could happen with uh, with uh, Ruby Rose, but as the show went on, it kind of struggled to uh, pick up steam. And and today, when this news dropped, all I, I first went to the comment section because I that has got to get his entertainment, got to get, got to, got to, mm, <laughs> got to, got to read the feed. And it was just, it was a landslide. Thank God. Oh my God, I just can't stand her. This and that. I'm like, oh God, wow, that is brutal. So my question to you, I, this is my theory. I'm, I believe that she's going to do the political thing and be like, um, my reasons are, are this, but the real reasons I'm thinking is because she's probably just sick and tired of the constant bashing you know, of her being cast uh, 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 in, the, uh, in the role in the first place, because she got that from, from day one. And like I said, I, I admit it. I, I I know she's not the strongest actress, but some of the things that were said were were, were crazy. What, what what are your thoughts on that whole thing? Do you? I know this is your favorite show on on TV now. <laughs> uh, I I actually have not seen this one, but uh, no, I have seen. I I do think that's an interesting theory because I did see an article mentioning that she, I believe, took a little a little step back from some of her social media platforms during the run of the show. 
Um, it makes me wonder, and I'm I'm not here to spread rumors, but if it was oh, even no, a little more those rumors, <laughs> I'm wondering if it maybe was a little bit more of a mutual decision than they're letting on that they couldn't Ooh. come out and say we're firing Ruby Rose. Uh, but it definitely feels like they're very whether it was fully her decision or not, they're very ready to recast and move forward. And I, honestly, if people are not thrilled with her acting, which I know she. Uh, she definitely fell a little short of the mark for me on Orange is the New Black because that is such a stacked cast and she they made a big deal Oscar about her winning coming performance. on. performance. Oscar winning. Ooh. <laughs> you should, you should have seen your, your, whole, uh, your, your whole demeanor just when I said that you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, but, so, uh, you know, I, I, I would say good maybe maybe not the worst news in the world for them if, if they still have an interesting product there and something kind of a little groundbreaking and, and more interesting to say with that right. show that maybe if they're not getting distracted by people not being happy with that casting decision uh, however that decision came down might not be worst case scenario for you the you might not be off on that one i i didn't i i had it like heavy handed on one side, maybe it was just because she was unhappy. You know what? I'm with you right now. It makes sense that if obviously she wasn't, uh, she was probably unhappy for a reason. And Warner Brothers isn't blind. Obviously, they saw the uh, the backlash too. You are, you probably are right on the money with it. It was probably a mutual decision. Hey, it's not working. Um, the it's it's probably maybe it was mentioned. Maybe it wasn't. Just to be nice. It's uh, we're not getting the performances out of this that we uh, that we were expecting. Uh, probably maybe a nice way of saying, you know, the acting is because I'll admit it. They, on some scenes, the acting is a little wooden and I, I'm like, I cringe a little bit. I didn't use the word cringe. I felt like I never I, I never heard the word cringe before until she was cast the, from the very first episode. The word cringe kept repeating a lot on social media when it came to uh, criticizing you know her performances and I gotta admit it it's 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 a, it's a little true because everyone else around her especially the people who play the villains there's a there's her character and then there's a her character's twin sister that plays like a mad hatter like jokerish type of a character named Alice like from Alice in Wonderland mm -hmm. and every time Alice and this is the villain every time she's on screen, I am glued 100%. Yeah. She is, it's, it's, it's so compelling. And she just draws, she's like gravity. Just draws me in. And, and uh, it's, I don't, I'm not getting that uh, from, from, uh, from Ruby. I almost said Amy again. <laughs> and, uh, and I just, I feel like you're probably Amy right. Rose? from Amy Rose. What did you say? Your new, your new stage name. There, there is an Amy, Bob. isn't there? Or I'm thinking about Amber Rose. That's who I'm thinking about. I think, yeah. I think that's Kanye West's ex or something like that. So maybe. I, you know what? I was about to be like, I think she did. And I'm like, it's OK. We don't need to. I don't know. I'll pretend I don't know. We'll just stick, I don't, with, we'll stick with I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, like, I guess, I guess, guys, let me know your thoughts on it. Do you think it was mostly uh, Ruby's decision to leave? Or do you think it was like, like uh, Amy th is thinking, a mutual decision? It's, we're not getting what we thought we were uh, expecting from this performance, and we are trying to protect the brand from the barrage of these, you know, comments and these uh, reviews from the critics. So we're we're gonna just let's part ways and see if um, starting from scratch with the new Batwoman, because uh, at the end of the day, Warner Brothers is going because Batwoman is everyone knows how people feel about Batman, and whether even though this is a two completely different character, it's still in the Bat family. And fans are rabid and real sensitive about Batman. So anything that, that sullies the Batman name, they're going to come out swinging on. So they're probably trying to protect the, the oh, brand. piss off nerds, man. Yeah, they are. Those tiny little fist of fury, man. But well, I guess we'll find out what's going on. Guys, what do you, what do you think about this? Are you happy to see uh, Ruby uh, go? Or are you upset? I, I'm going to be honest. I saw both. I saw people saying that they were upset that she was leaving and people that, that were over the moon that she was going but what are your thoughts on it let's talk about it on we got your mail and speaking of we got your mail well guys if you want to submit a comment for us to read on we got your mail you can do that through all of our social media on at t3 medias at 
Facebook, Twitter, even TikTok. Go to T3 Media's on, on social media and send us a comment on any topic you want. Or if you have a question that you want us to answer, we will do it right here on We Got Your Mail. So do we have any thing to, to talk about on We Got Your Mail right now at all? Amy, is there anything new? Do you want me to, to start off or do you, you got a cue? I, I think you got some... Uh... Some inter Sometimes people just send them straight to our personal Instagrams, which is fun and delightful. Right. You can do I that. I don't care. I get a notification. I'm happy. The first question that came in came from Orange of Code on Instagram. And he just had a, a question for me. That's a, a question. WWE or other promotions, what is more interesting to you? So that that came directly uh, to me. So for me personally, I've always been a, a WWE guy and I, I never gave any of the other competition that that organization had a chance. I, from day one, when I became a wrestling fan, uh, I, I stuck with WWE and I got lucky because when the WWE absorbed and bought out all their competition, I luckily was, was on the winning side the whole time, even though at some points it looked like other organizations were going to win that that battle but i never started watching anything else like outside that was like wcw and all these other uh, franchise uh, other companies i never watched them until they were absorbed by the wwe so i've always been a wwe guy through and through 100 percent. so uh thanks for the question orange and i know there's not i know there's never going to be a better question from orange of code i appreciate that guy you you are awesome for, for asking that question. You, that was a stand-up question. I know you will never let me down in the future. I appreciate you. What do we have next, Amy? So next, I have uh, some personal Instagram questions from Orange of Code. All right. Uh, sent to my personal at amy.n.newman, if you want in on the fun. Uh, <laughs> and he says, cute girl, heart emoji, sweet. Tongue emoji. Mm. Tongue and I just want to do real quick. This was not a question, but it was something I felt needed to be addressed. If my own boyfriend sent me the tongue emoji, I would be uncomfortable. Yeah. That's it. That's all. End of thought. I Don't mean, send people. The tongue emoji. Um, if I, I'm trying to understand what the combination means, heart. Oh, it just clicked. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll probably. Uh, uh, never mind. I'm not even gonna bring it up because it, it, it throws me for a loop. That right after a legit question. I mean, and like I said, they're all legit questions. I mean, if if we see a comment or a question that we want to respond to here on the show, we're, we're going to do it. But the thing I wanted to point out was the fact that uh, you sent a legit question about WWE and then the next, the very next statement, heart emoji, tongue emoji. That's got to give you some feels. I mean, I'm cute. He's not wrong. You can send me compliments. Like that's not, I'm not going to be mad. Oh, Don't oh, send right. me the tongue. Oh, but me, I'm ever so pissed. Where's my heart emoji? You're, you're mad you didn't get the tongue emoji. Where's my tongue emoji? Look, I mean, even if I don't, even if that's not a uh, a, a flag that I want to salute to, I still appreciate the compliment. And you don't know what you can convince me of, dude. I mean, it's 2020, man. Wow. There's, there's no lines anymore. I, I get compliments from, from, from guys before. I'm securing my masculinity. So... Where's my tongue emoji? Orange. Come on. I got feelings too, man. I'm trying to put out quality content here for you. So, you know, if 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 she can get the heart emoji and and the tongue emoji, send them my way too, man. At least. At least. Everybody send me compliments. No emojis. <laughs> And then just barrage you with the tongue emoji. Yeah, I'm on board for that. Now, we yeah. also, now, here's my favorite part. Follow up with the actual question. Saw you on YouTube. Obviously. Do you think it is a good idea to remake Hercules live action? <laughs> that's, what, that's what killed me. Okay, before we even answer this question. This I'm is just exactly... picturing him like, do you think? 
<laughs> it would be a guy. <laughs> you think he has his, t- his, his tongue out the whole time? Answer the question with a heart on its sleeve. The the little behind the scenes about this. This was totally coincidental. I got orange. I got your message on Instagram, and I noticed that this was like one of the first time that I ever legit got a question on Instagram before for you. We got your mail. It's usually on Twitter or it's usually on the channel. So I reached out to Amy. I just texted her and I said, um, I said, you know what? I think the structure that you helped me build for the show is making an impact. It's 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 working. And and uh, and I appreciate you for for helping uh, do this for the, the channel, for the blog, because I really feel like it's really uh, changing the way we're being perceived by the community. And then Amy follows it up with, oh, you're damn right. It's 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 working because look what I got. And then she shows me she screenshots and shows me. And I'm, oh, my God, it's the same guy. <laughs> I, something's working. I don't know the show structure. <laughs> something's working. It must be. Never, um, <laughs> never mind. I'm not gonna say. But that. hey, thank you, thank you for the, thank you for the love, thank you for the, the question. Uh, I'm not overly a huge fan of the Disney live actions. I think it's just why remake something that's good and worked. But Hercules is my personal favorite, and the movie's great, and the music's fucking fire. So I am curious and cautiously optimistic about that one so right back to you so orange of code i want my damn heart emoji over here at t3 medias anytime four o'clock in the morning hey you can even send it to me and just say you up i might respond <laughs> all right guys we're gonna i'm gonna, we're gonna close this, this show uh on all that i just i thought that it would just be uh, real funny to point that out that that was such a funny situation that, that kind of happened it had me laughing and it had me freaking out like oh my god what a, what what did i do to deserve it's just your first glimpse of like because you were more free you were like what he said what i was like it's fine that is not the worst thing i've gotten on instagram <laughs> It's a little, uh, a little glitz into being a woman in this world. It's all good. <laughs> Two totally different experiences from the same source. So, I mean, I guess you're right. That's how it is. But I want my tongue emoji. Amy Rose <laughs> loves attention. All right. <laughs> that is our show. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, support the channel. Uh, Make sure to subscribe, send us a like, send us your questions, send us your tongue emojis, uh, and send us your comments, and maybe we will read them and share them and mock you. Sorry, Orange of Code. (laughs) uh, But you might uh, be our next next topic of discussion on We Got Your Mail. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at T3 Medias. I'm your host, Amy Newman. If you want to follow me, I am at amy.n.newman on Instagram, amy underscore n underscore Newman. Search Amy and Newman, you'll find me. Uh, if you want to follow me. And thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. And if you want to follow me, you can always message me on Twitter at Chris Fagan, is it 1980? Or right here on the channel at T3 Medias. And there you go. That's been our show. This episode was filmed in front of a live studio audience of my teddy bears who are watching me and giving me their love and support as always. Thanks, guys. Take when it to I, that position. Was, 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 when I did that, was that too much? <laughs> did I violate? You know, stuff like that. Oh, right? I don't think that's ever happened to me. I don't think Good. any guy that Good. I've been with has, has ever recapped. They'd be like, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> but... <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha